Right, so I'm getting ready to try and fit the rear sprocket onto the high gear. Uh, right, so to begin with, uh, the gearbox sprocket that is. Now, uh, I'm surprised that this uh, sprocket doesn't seem to be worn. It's actually been replaced relatively uh, recently by the look of it because the chain is completely worn, shot away, and the, uh, so is the rear sprocket is shot away. So that must have been replaced quite recently. Uh, so we're going to put that back on. The thing about this is that um, there's this groove here on the high gear, and the groove is for this O-ring oil seal. Because what happens is the oil, there's, there's, the, there's the oil seal here that we put in earlier, in the, this big uh, oil seal, and that runs on this uh, that bearing surface there on the back of the gearbox sprocket and we'll be putting some oil on there in, in a minute because we certainly don't want that to run dry from the start. And that's fine, but oil then, so the oil still takes care of that, but what happens is the oil can sneak out down these uh, splines uh, in between the sprocket and the high gear. So for that reason, uh, trying from that, they, they cut this um, groove, which is not actually on early bikes, but you, you can replace the high gear if you want to. Uh, and that groove is for this O-ring seal. Uh, and then we put the new, the old and the new, uh, we put the new locking tab on with the nut and the locking tab will squish this oil seal and prevent oil from coming down the splines. Now, as well as doing that, I've put some well seal, of course, on the actual uh, splines so that um, just, just to help things, I put some seal actually in the bottom of that groove. So what we need to do now is put this on and then tighten it to its torque. I need to check the torque. I can't remember. It's very high. But of course, the at the moment the high gear is will move because it's not been done up yet. When when the uh, sprocket's on, it won't move. Or it'll have a very minimal play. But the problem is at the moment, I'll put that I'll put this sprocket on and it will go on, but it almost certainly won't go on far enough so that I can see that groove or certainly enough of that groove to get the oil seal in. So what I'll probably have to do is I will probably have to put the nut on. Where's it gone? Where's me not going? There it is. I'll put the nut on and actually screw it up tight to actually push the sprocket on so that, and then take the nut back off so that I can then put the oil seal in and then put the whole thing on properly. Now, in order to do that, I've had to fit the rear chain um, so that I can lock the rear chain. I'm going to be trying to use my special chain locking tool we'll see if that works later on because i need to use it on the front sprocket because the way uh we're turning the bike i can't use it on the rear sprocket because i'd have to put it up underneath the chain guard which you can't reach so we'll put the chain on and see if we can lock it the chain is gone right i'll try and demonstrate this i've only got one hand so it's going to be difficult right uh, it's going to be very difficult right but when you go to check a chain uh, you put it. You go onto the back of the back of the sprocket, and you see how much that chain comes off. And as you can see, even just I'm only using one finger because I'm holding the camera with the other hand. Just how loose this is. So that is one very knackered chain. All right? You know that that's a, that's the easiest way to check if a chain is completely gone. How much it pulls away from this rear sprocket. So that's gone. I'm only putting the chain on now uh, so that I can use it to lock. Uh, things up so I can put that sprocket on the front. Now also the rear sprocket is worn and I'm going to try and show this. I'll probably fail um, but uh, what I'm looking for is that these teeth, let's see if I can get this to focus in any kind of way, are slightly hooked. Uh, they're hooked. If you can see they're not even, the, the you know they, they don't go up like an even mountain. Come on, focus your little swine. Right, uh, they're, they're, they're slightly hooked. 
you can see this one it's like as we look at it it's bent over to the right yeah focus your little beggar focus i'm pressing the auto the manual focus and it's doing bugger all for me right anyway so there's definite signs of hooking which means that that sprocket is uh, kind of on the way out it's, it's, it's out in fact so um we're going to be changing i think we're going to be changing the rear sprocket as well we might as well while we've got the bike you know i, I hate doing it because i i hate you know all that bloody oil on that these chains i just hate them i do i'm sorry i'm a bit of an ocd kind of guy as you probably noticed and um you know i have to have everything neat and tidy and black horrible greasy oil on chains is not my idea of fun but uh you know, whilst we're doing everything, then it's a pain in the back. So we'll but we'll take the back wheel off, and uh, we'll uh, we'll change the sprocket. I think. I'm just I just check on the price and availability and so on. But uh, I think that's what we're going to do. Okay. So what what we're looking for is hooked teeth. That's the easiest way to spot a sprocket that needs replacing. And amazingly, they're not hooked on the uh, on the front sprocket. I'm just checking that because if they are, we want to change it now, but they're not. They're not. Whereas on the rear sprocket, they are. And on the chains, obviously knackered. So I'm guessing that the sprocket must have been changed fairly recently. That's all I can think. Anyway, so that's what we're going to do. I'm going to push that on now. Then I'm going to put the chain on and connect the chain. Then I'm going to put my locking tool on. I'm going to try and tighten things up sufficiently to push the sprocket on. Then when it's pushed on, I'll take the nut back off. We'll get the oil seal on and the lock ring and put the nut on properly. Um, lock tight it up as well to the correct torque and I'll check the torque and uh, we should be done. Then I'll take the chain off, throw it away and we'll get a new chain, a new rear sprocket. That's the plan. <laughs> See if I can find a finger that's clean enough to press the stop record button. I'll have to use a knuckle. Okay, so I've pushed the sprocket on. And I might actually get it so I don't need to do the nut up. I might actually get it so it's slid fully home. And one sort of trick for that was I kept trying it on different splines and it was a bit tight. And I turned it and turned it until suddenly, woof, there was one position, it just slid straight on. Well, you know, it's a bit tight, not too loose, but, you know, it went fully home. And I don't know if you can see, but I've managed to just get, I've got, you probably can't see it on the camera, but the, the oil seal, the O-ring is now in that groove it's a bit tight you have to poke it in with a screwdriver but it does go in and so i'm really happy with that and i've put the chain on i've tightened it up the washing machine's going and i've put my you know my my uh, sprocket jammer as it's called little thing i bought on the internet uh with it and hopefully that'll be enough to stop the uh wheel turning and we should be able to tighten it up it's 58 foot pounds this nut um, what was there? Someone else I was going to say, can't remember, but um, yeah, so that's all in position. So, uh, we're going to put the lock ring on now. I've put some um Loctite on the threads, put the lock ring on. It's got these um, sort of tabs that go on the uh, flutes of the what are they called? Do you know what I mean? Spline things, <laughs> yeah. Then, and then we've got the actual note itself, and hopefully we're going to do this up to fifty-eight foot pounds. Now, in some manuals, it doesn't actually give you a torque for this because basically they're such a nightmare to torque up that uh, they basically just like do it up as tight as you possibly can. Because of course, the old method I used to use back in the day was a hammer and a cold chisel. Doo -doo -doo because no one ever had a spanner big enough to fit that but i have invested in this mega thing which is like one socket into a bigger socket into a bigger socket and this is what one and seven eighths yeah so the one and seven eighths inch socket which i know is the size of that nut okay so there we go right so we've got the uh Torque wrench on 58. Let's see if we can get it to 58. Even with that locking thing, I'm a bit, I'm not sure. I'm turning the 
torque wrench a bit the wrong way because the camera's in the way. In other words, I should be pushing down rather than pulling up, but we'll see if we can do it. See, the trouble is it's bouncing. In other words, you know. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. So, yeah, great, great. So that's down to 58 foot pounds. And we're going to bend this lock tab over uh, and we're done. I was going to loosen the chain back off again because I've got it up like bow tight. And, uh, and take this uh, locking thing out and bend that tab over it. And that's the gearbox pocket in place. I'll take the rear chain off, throw it away basically. And then we'll get a new rear chain, probably a new rear sprocket. And, uh, and, and then we're sorted. But anyway, we, I'm pleased because we've got this sprocket on, which is a nightmare to lock the engine. And we've done the nut up on the kickstart side, which is a nightmare to lock. Uh, unless, you've got this, uh, oops, unless you've got the special tool, which we do have, which we can use on the clutch hub. Of course, we can't use the tool on the clutch hub this side because, of course, uh, it's in the way. <laughs> you know, we can lock it, fine, but then, unless we've got a massive sort of spanner, of course, we can't get the socket on uh, because the actual thing's in the way. So that's why you can't lock it. But anyway, we've succeeded. This little locking thing, this is called a... What's it from? Martin Roy or somebody? Or something like that. Oh, I don't know. It could be motor. I don't know. It's called a sprocket jammer anyway. It's only a little thing. You normally use it on the rear sprocket and it works really well. But obviously, because I'm starting it this way, I've had to use it on the front sprocket. Um, but it seems to have worked and uh, that's great. Okay. That's all sorted.